Hey everybody, welcome back to Sovereign Money. As you get more comfortable navigating around the crypto landscape, you tend to accumulate more and more assets. It's not unusual for your crypto assets to be spread around multiple different wallets that you've collected along your journey. Each of these wallets has their own seed phrase, which needs to be safely and securely stored while still being accessible. You can see how this could end up being a total seed phrase mess. Disorganization does not lead to financial freedom. It's also not a good system for your sovereign money. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get and keep your seed phrase house in order. Whether you've collected two or 50 different seed phrases, this video is for you. Okay, quick warning. The techniques I'm going to be using in this video are more advanced and any misuse or a misunderstanding could lead to total catastrophic loss of all your funds. So please use these techniques at your own risk. What if there was a way to have a single master seed phrase and use that to create a bunch of child seed phrases underneath? And what if that master seed phrase could always be used to recall the child seed phrases underneath? And what if the child seed phrases could be further secured with their own set of passphrases. Seed phrase bliss, right? No more random collection of seed phrases spread all over the place. You would just keep track of one master seed phrase and all the other seed phrases for your various wallets could just be created on the spot. A simple spreadsheet on Google would suffice for your security system. Well, this does exist and it's called hierarchical deterministic wallets or HD wallets for short. And I'm going to show you how to use this technology to keep your seed phrases secure and organized. The concept of HD wallets is not new. HD wallet technology was finalized and fully implemented in 2019 with BIP85. That stands for Bitcoin Improvement Proposal number 85. Oh, side note, because Bitcoin is an open source project, its code is freely available online for the whole world to see and scrutinize. Anyone can make suggestions for improvement or changes to the code through the GitHub site. These improvement proposals, if accepted, are given a moniker starting with BIP and then whatever number comes next in the sequence. The proposals then are open for comment or modification and often take years to fully implement. Okay, Back to the video. BIP85, while implemented in 2019, had been in the works since February of 2012, when Bitcoin developer Peter Wheela first proposed the idea of hierarchical deterministic wallets. That word is so hard to say. HD wallets. The concept was discussed and improved for the next seven and a half years through BIP32 and BIP44, and finally BIP85. Although introduced by the Bitcoin community, HD wallets are designed to accommodate a variety of different cryptocurrencies. These wallets enable the generation of an entire range of wallets from a single seed phrase. In the event of a compromise of a child seed phrase, the master seed phrase and other child seed phrases remain secure. Moreover, BIP85 wallets offer advanced security features like passphrase generation and multi-signature accounts, thereby enhancing the overall robustness of the wallet. In essence, HD wallets empower the creation of a comprehensive suite of wallets from a single unified seed phrase. The BIP32, BIP44, and BIP85 are all Bitcoin improvement proposals that define the standards for HD wallets, each of them serving a special purpose in enhancing the security and usability of HD wallets. Here's a brief overview of each proposal. In BIP32, the concept of HD wallets was first introduced, allowing the creation of a tree structure of seed phrases derived from a master seed. This hierarchy enables an unlimited number of child seeds to be derived from one single master seed. BIP44 then built upon BIP32 by defining the standard for the structure and derivation paths of these HD wallets. BIP44 allowed for the creation of multiple accounts under a single master seed. Each account was given its own unique derivation path, making it easier to manage various assets within the same wallet. BIP85 then built further on top of BIP32 by introducing a method to derive multiple child seeds while maintaining a deterministic relationship with the parent seed. BIP85 enables the creation of multiple independent wallets under a single master seed phrase. 
you can see how all three proposals interplayed to create the standard that we have today. Okay, side note. If you're still wondering why you'd want to create a bunch of child seeds underneath a parent seed phrase, let me explain. The whole point of buying crypto and Bitcoin is so that you can take control of your own finances and do what you want, when you want, with your money. The only way to do that right now is to move your assets into self-hosted wallets protected by a seed phrase that you and only you control. In order to diversify those assets and as a result of generally exploring the cryptoverse, you're going to collect a lot of assets and they're gonna end up in a bunch of different wallets spread around on a bunch of different platforms. Over time, you can accumulate quite a collection of Bitcoin wallets and the respective seed phrases. Securing all those seed phrases can become a monumental and stressful task. The BIP85 parent child seed tree solves all that by reducing the security and your stress level down to one single parent seed phrase. And that's why I'm suggesting that you learn about this. Now, let's look at how we can put all this information together so that you can get your seed phrase house in order. First, we need to find a tool to create our seed phrase tree. There are several different tools available, but these are the two that I like. The first one is from bitcoiner.guide forward slash seed, and this is the seed tool, and it has various sections. That's a good one. And then the other one I like is called iancoleman.io forward slash BIP39, and it says mnemonic, mnemonic code converter at the top, but this is a a tool that we can use to create parent and child seed trees. Let's use the Ian Coleman generator for its simplicity. You might be tempted to go to the website and dive right in and start creating seed phrases. Hang on, smarty pants. This is a website, so any seed phrase you create on this website is compromised by definition, and you can't use it. So in order to make it secure so that you can use the seed phrases generated by these tools, you have to download a copy to your computer. So let's take a look. Here we are in the Ian Coleman BIP39 code converter. And what you have to do is you go to the file menu, you press save page as, and then you save the file to your desktop or document folder, wherever you want to save it on your computer. And then when you want to open it, you double click it from your computer. You don't use the website. The one you're looking at right here is running on my computer. It is not the website. Now, when you double click that file, you'll notice that your browser opens up and launches the file and it looks just like the web page. It, it is just like the web page. It's the exact same code, except it does work when you're offline. So if you can check that by just simply turning off your Wi-Fi and that way you'll be running in a secure environment. You don't want to be generating seed phrases of any kind while you're connected to the internet and especially not doing it on any website that is part of the internet. Just make sure that the address in the address bar of your web browser is listing the location of the file and not the website, okay? So that's what you need to look at to make sure that you're running the file rather than the website. Also, of course, you can turn off your Wi-Fi and the website version likely won't work, but of course the local version will. Once you have verified that you've turned off your Wi-Fi and you're in a secure environment, you can launch the program and it looks like this. I don't know why, but the default number of words that are selected to generate a seed phrase with is 15 uh, right here, but I like to use either 12 or 24, and you can use either one you want, so I'm going to pick 12. And that's it. We're not quite done, but it's that simple. Then you click the word generate, and again, make sure you're offline and make sure you're running the local version and not the web-based version. So when I press generate, I generated a seed phrase down here. And there is my 12 word seed phrase. And if you scroll down a bit farther, you can see that one of the options is to create a passphrase. Now I need to explain something about passphrases. They're like a 13th or 25th word to your seed phrase. And they're a great idea for increased security. I use them as well, but they create a completely different account than just using the seed phrase alone. Let's take a look at the program again. Okay, so if you scroll down a little bit from the seed phrase area, the BIP39 mnemonic is your seed phrase. If you look right below that, you can see the passphrase area. As I enter 
any amount of texts or words or numbers or anything, you can watch this area, the BIP seed and the root key change. So let's just put one letter in here, Q. Oh, did you notice that? This number is completely different and this number is completely different. Let's do it again. So every passphrase, every different passphrase creates a different account. The seed phrase did not change, but the, as the passphrase changes, the account and the key and the basic identification of that account, for Bitcoin at least, changes. So you have to keep that in mind. So before you go ahead and generate any child seed phrases, you have to decide if and what passphrase you're going to use. Okay, so seed phrase is up here and passphrase is here. Let's say we're not going to use a passphrase for our parent seed phrase. So we're just going to leave that blank. We're going to go with this seed phrase just by itself, what I call a naked seed phrase. Then below that a little bit, if you scroll down, you can see where it says show BIP 85. You click that box, scroll down again, leave all these things the way they are. And you have another option to select 12 or 18 or 24 words. I'm going to stick with 12. And as you can see, there's already a child seed generated. So this up here is the parent seed. And this area down here is the child seed. And if you look carefully, it says BIP 85 index. That is the number of the child seed related to that parent seed. So child seed number zero is stand, ring, venue, etc. And child seed number one is this one right here. And child seed number two, etc. Now you don't have to go in any kind of order. You can say 25, 74, etc. And you literally can create an unlimited number of child seeds all underneath this parent seed. It's very important that you know that the child seeds created underneath this parent seed are different if you're using a passphrase as opposed to no passphrase. In other words, we've got a parent seed up here, a child seed down here, and let's go back to zero, stand ring venue. And then if we enter a passphrase, not the best passphrase, now it's different and it's still child seed number zero. So you, you have to make sure that you record not only the parent seed phrase, but if you're going to use a passphrase to secure it even more and add a 13th word, you need this passphrase recorded. Okay. So the point is, is that when you create these child seed phrases, you can use them in various wallets that you have. If you ever want to recall a seed phrase, a child seed phrase that you've used in a certain wallet, all you need to know is the parent seed phrase. And of course the pass phrase, if you used one, and then you also need to know the index number and that's it. You don't need to keep track of all the seeds you create underneath the parent seed. So, Here's the parent seed. Here's the password or passphrase, excuse me. Get rid of that. I'm not going to use a passphrase. And I've got my child seed underneath. Let's say I'm using a wallet and it's trust wallet. And I know that I am using BIP 85 index number five for that wallet. Well, anytime I want to recall that seed phrase and restore that wallet, all I have to do is enter the parent seed phrase and the BIP 85 index number. That's it. I don't have to keep track of any child seed phrase underneath the parent, just the parent 
and the index numbers. That's it. Neat, huh? Now, a more advanced technique would be to create a passphrase for some or all of your child's seed phrases. And let me show you how to do that. So you go down to the bottom, you select your child seed phrase, copy it, and paste it into the master seed phrase area. And now that is being looked at by the software as a master seed phrase. And guess what? Now that has child seed phrases underneath that. So you can sort of imagine how this could branch out and get really complicated. So I wouldn't recommend that. But here's the area where you can create a passphrase underneath that account. And as I type that passphrase into that box, you can see how the BIP39 seed and root key changes. And again, this is a child seed sort of acting as a master seed for the software. So you can see how you can create a master seed phrase using the generate button, pretty simple. Then you, you scroll down and you can create an unlimited number of child seed phrases. Each one of them has an index number associated with it. You don't need to record or remember the child seed phrase at all just the index number as long as you have that parent seed phrase. Then what you do is you go to your various wallets that you may have accumulated over your travels around the cryptoverse, and you can restore those accounts with the child seed phrases. And you just record, well, trust wallet I used index number five, and Binance wallet I used index number three, and Coinbase wallet I used index number 26. And that's it, that's all you need to do. So you see how you just need to track the master seed phrase and the index numbers to stay super organized and super secure. Then what you do is you create a spreadsheet on Google or somewhere else that documents the index numbers and then the wallet they're used for. And that's it. Super easy. At this point, you can just keep generating new child seeds for each wallet that you deploy in the future. Now here's the catch. Not all wallets support a restore function with a foreign seed phrase that the wallet didn't generate. Now, in my experience, the vast majority of wallets, soft wallets, and hardware wallets do allow for restoration of the wallet with a seed phrase that wasn't generated by the wallet. But there are quite a few wallets that don't have passphrase capabilities. So if you do use a passphrase for your child seeds or the master seed, you might be limiting your wallet options. Once again, if you have the parent seed phrase, you always have access to the child seed phrases. And if a child seed phrase gets compromised, no other child seed phrase is in danger, nor the parent seed phrase. They're all secure because no one can get to the sibling seed phrases or the parent seed phrase by just knowing the child seed phrase. However, if the master seed phrase is compromised and someone gets a hold of that, that's not good. While the BIP85 child parent seed phrase technology offers a tremendous amount of flexibility and security, it does have some drawbacks. Number one, it is quite complex. I'm sure I've lost a few of you. Once you get, once you play around with that software, you can kind of figure it out. And I'm just trying to help you stay organized and secure. But the learning curve is a little steep in this and it can be very intimidating. Number two, Parent seed phrases are a single point of failure. And if your parent seed phrase gets compromised and out in the wild, you could lose everything underneath. Whereas if one of the child seed phrases gets compromised, yes, that account could be compromised, but all of the other accounts would remain secure. Number three, implementation. Not all Bitcoin and crypto wallets support this technology, particularly when passphrases are used. So you have to decide what type of wallets you're going to be using, and you need to know if they support this technology. Number four, anxiety. Actually, using BIP85 child parent seed phrase management is supposed to relieve seed phrase anxiety, but for some people, having one master seed phrase controlling all of their wealth, it's just too much. Instead, what you could do is just have different seed phrases unrelated to each other and keep track of all of them. But if you want to simplify things, this parent-child setup is a really neat way to do that. 
And the fifth drawback is there could be unforeseen vulnerabilities in this process. It's, it's been around since 2019, but that's not that long. Now, there haven't been any vulnerabilities detected yet, and the code is open source, and it's open to improvement for the whole world to see, and nobody's figured out a way to crack the code. But I suppose it's possible that a vulnerability could be exploited or discovered, and it could put your funds at risk. So you need to take all these advantages and disadvantages of the BIP85 proposal into consideration before you start messing around with your seed phrases. The security and safety of your seed phrases is absolutely paramount to your financial freedom. Well, that's it. You're officially a seed phrase master. I hope this video helps you along in your journey to financial freedom. And if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, hit that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And I will see you in the next video.